Hello, welcome to the stream, everybody. Uh, this is uh, our sort of monthly painting stream. I'm back with more Car Wars Cars to Paint. In the studio with me is Hunter hey, and Brandon. How are y'all doing? Welcome to another episode of SJ Games Live. Here we are. Yeah, Ben's back. I'm back. If you if you missed it last time, Ben was here last month. He's been in a few streams previously. I think this uh, is stream number three for this me. This will be yeah. stream number three because yeah, he started during Florida. So last Florida. Someone's door creeping in the door and, behind uh, you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we, uh, we're going to be doing hobby streams hopefully once a month. This is our second monthly one. And uh, we're going to be taking a look at some of the cars that you started last time. Uh, yep. We, we started a few. If you, have, if you haven't seen that one, you can always go back and check that stream. That's on YouTube and Twitch. And it is on the Instagram account as well. Instagram as well, yes. Thank you for finding me. Uh, and also, yeah, uh, we want to admit, we're, we're really focused on car wars right now. Obviously, we're getting closer to the Kickstarter delivery. We're really excited about that. But we also have pre-orders up for people that missed out on the Kickstarter. Or if yep. you want to, you know, you you have now decided you want more stuff. Or we have a couple of new items like Uncle Al's. There's an Uncle Al's book that we just added to it and stuff like that. So uh, those are up on Warehouse 23 now. Uh, of course, Kickstarter delivery to backers, what we're focused on, once that goes out, then we'll, you know, you'll be able to get it at retail as well, at game stores, but if you want to get a little bit of a discount, uh, you can pre-order it now on Warehouse 23, uh, that'll be a little bit, it's not going to be as cheap as the one on Kickstarter, but it's a little bit of a deal, so, you know, set that up, with, Uncle, Uncle Al will give you some discounts. What that means is this old Car Wars shirt that I brought today is no longer valid, it is no longer under construction, True. as the shirt says. True. It's complete, you can pre-order it. You can pre-order it, we're really excited. It, we're, we're, we don't have all the stuff in, in to ship it to backers just yet, we're waiting on a couple containers, but uh, if you've seen our Instagram, I shared a couple pictures of the boxes and boxes of stuff that's yep. waiting for and us I, to pack I have up. been taking pictures of unpainted, completed minis, yeah. uh, all... Well, just a ton of them lately. Yes. Literally hundreds. And Jimmy just walked in. I want to shout out Jimmy and Brandon. They just finished up the new Car Wars website. Yep. Uh, ben contributed stuff to that as well. Uh, the, yeah, I've been uh, putting all the graphics yeah, together for all that. all the graphics. If you want to check that out, that's uh, carwars.sjgames.com. Because there just aren't enough minis to keep me busy painting all the time. Well, speaking of minis, let's uh, let's jump in. What do, what do we got here? Let's take a look at the turntable real quick. We'll focus on one of the cars that we got here. Just all so right, you guys so can yeah, this, see this an This is example. one if you guys tuned in during the FnordCon stream. Uh, this is Warhawk. Um, I actually caused a little bit of confusion the other day because I named a bunch of pictures of this thing Warpath, but that is incorrect. It is Warhawk. Um, this was a quick paint job that I did for the Fenordcon stream. Um, so this was just a couple of quick dry brushes and, and ink washes um, to get a cool, you know, fairly good table ready looking car done quickly. Um, what I had been planning to work on today, swap that guy out was this dude. I believe this car is named Pure Energy. You can see I'm still working on it, so it's still on my little holder base thumbtack thing that I do. Unfortunately, as soon as I got here, I pulled out the purple paint to get started on it, and the purple paint has dried up. I apparently did not completely close it last time, and that last little bit of paint at the bottom dried up. I have no more purple paint on me, but, but fortunately, uh, Stiletto, I started a little bit on Stiletto, also during the FnordCon stream. I do have red paint. I just threw all the paint that I could in a box. Because um, I was kind of in a hurry getting here, because it's Gen Con's coming up. We're all really busy for Gen Con. Um, but yes, uh, so we're going to be doing uh, Stiletto today. Stiletto's looking a little washed out. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try to do some more on Stiletto Red. And I actually have something fun that I think I'm going to do with Pure Energy even though I don't have any purple paint for the chassis, I'm gonna to try to do something that I had wanted to do with the window. So, uh, yes. So I guess I will start with the window because that's gonna to need to dry to do the thing that I want to do. So, and if y'all have any questions think? about, uh, uh, you know, techniques or any questions about, yep. you know, equipment that Ben's using, anything like that, paints he's choosing, just ask him in chat. Let us know. Uh, we'll, 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 we kind of do a little bit of a, it's not a full tutorial. It's more like you're hanging out with us. So chat, feel free to chat along. We'll, yep. we'll answer any questions and he'll, he'll go through some steps as we go through it as well. So, all right. So I guess for the window, I'm going to do a, a fairly contrasting color, but not a completely contrasting color. So I'm going to use these P3 paints. We got Necrotite green. We've got, Eldritch, which is kind of a nice sort of turquoise, and then as a highlight, I'm going to use this Menoth White highlight. Um, so we're going to start, we're going to get all three of these suckers open. And I guess all you people out there who, uh, who love dropper bottles, you can say, that's the reason, Ben, because they don't dry out like your purple paint did. That's why I transferred all mine to dropper bottles. 
I know, but I like I like just having this cap here. I love having this cap where I can just dip <laughs> he, the he brush. Me of my youth, but I still prefer the <laughs> yes, he's he's he said that because we all already said that off camera. Yeah, <laughs> you were already saying these words. And I guess uh, um, I th 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 when I when I was a youth, I guess I'm a little older. When I was a youth, the paint did not come in the dropper bottle. It came in cap, very similar to these, and so. That's just that's just how I learn, man. With these little caps, and sometimes they break off, unfortunately. That's what I, that's how I learned, and yeah. I still use droppers. But no, I, I, I'm joking. I used to have the old, um, I guess, talking about retro stuff. I really should have started with the white on these, because you can see these are very trans, translucent colors, and it's gonna take a few coats to get this sucker looking how I want it to. So let's do that. Knocked out. Yeah, we're talking about a. Uh, then I'll go to stiletto. Maybe we can do a little bit more on butcher too. Let's. Uh, we've got an empty thing over here. I'm gonna stick butcher on that. Butcher is another one that I tried to do as a quick demo. So butcher. Uh, I sort of started with some rusty reds and browns as an undercoat, and then did a lot of metal dry brushing over it to get like an old beat up rusty feel. But there's still some details like the lights maybe some of the lasers and the uh the high beams on top that could maybe get a little bit more detail although he kind of looks he doesn't look that bad uh mm -hmm. all just all silver like that yeah just kind of yeah for for me with the car like that so <clears throat> you're talking about taking it to a finish line because we we've, i think me and you have talked about this specifically about how there's a, there's different w stopping points essentially along a miniatures path like where you think it's ready to play for you it's a little bit more of a display model type quality for me it's like just what's the bare minimum for me to get to a table and be happy with it yeah for a miniature like that i would say for me it would be like i'd paint the tires and like the windshield and like you said kind of like the the weapon bits to be a little bit different than the rest of the, the car just to make them stand out and that's about it for me and that was a really easy technique. If you want, again, that was our last stream. If you want to check that out, um, that is on YouTube. You can find it there. It's it's it was just dry brushing for the most part. All right, so let's get back to stiletto over here. Um, I've got my reds busted open. Um, I've got my Cador red base and my Scorn red. Uh, again, these are all P three colors. That's why they have the uh, War Machine Hordes faction names. Um, and I also have coal black. Coal black is a very dark turquoise. And that is actually what I like to use to uh, shade my reds because you won't really know you're seeing it, but having that deep blue um, as a shadow creates a little bit of color contrast in addition to the value contrast of dark to light. And I, th I think it makes the uh, reds pop a lot more. That's an interesting point of like using colors that you wouldn't expect as the... Uh the the recesses like I, I see that with a lot of like because I, I i didn't really know about that for different colors as well like people were telling me for gold using purple for uh shadows was actually really really good and i checked i was like yeah that is really nice i do like i wouldn't have even thought of it but I yeah for yep purple's really good for skin, skin tones uh someone in the chat asked if uh, there's an issue with can paints or anything like that like spray cans there shouldn't be any any issue with that the, the, you, you prime it in that if you want to just paint with rattle cans that's fine too um you give it a couple of nice little dustings of different colors to add some gradients and that's it but yep. uh, then, yeah generally I, use I, I mean i would throw a wash on it after that for sure I, one of the things i actually did mean to have ready but i did not have time to do david spring and contrast paint because those are all all the rage as the young folks say um <laughs> i don't think any young folks say that <laughs> <laughs> that that's the joke um but yeah, uh, I, di I, I just didn't have, I, I needed to prep a new um, clean model to go with, and I just didn't have time to do that yet. Sure, sure. I mean, we're going to keep doing these as we go on, so we, we'll, we'll have time to do some other techniques and other, other paints and things like that. I'd love to try some try some stuff, show some different lines off that we use. Because you use P3, I use Vallejo and Citadel and Turbo Dork. I've used other stuff. We all use a little bit of a different stuff, kind of. I do supplies. use, a, I, there are some... Uh, some Citadel colors that I really like. They make a really good deep green that is just not, that doesn't exist in the P3 range called, I think, Caliban Green. And I like their washes. I like their, or their stuff. I guess they're the shades is what they call them. Yeah, and the, I like the technical stuff. I like the uh, the cracked earth stuff you can mm -hmm. do for some of the bases, which could actually look really good on Car Wars base. I mean, um, it's a little early, but we could always talk about Car Wars basing down in the future because they come 
transparent, but I think you could do stuff to add to that if you kind, really wanted to. Kind of. I wouldn't recommend it personally for Car Wars. You got to be super You got to be able to see through the, the arcs. Minute. Yeah, you got to see the arcs is the problem, and also having it uh, being able to see, see through, through, through to help. see the guides and stuff like that. I I would leave the the bases by personally, but maybe we could look into something like that. Uh, maybe maybe games. we can look at terrain as well. Some some kind of stuff that we can do for that. We we'll, yeah. I don't want to want to promise anything in the future necessarily that we can't do, but that's something we could potentially look at. Um, yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot there's a lot of stuff we can take a look at for this. I think. But yeah, uh, sorry, got off track with that question. Sp Rattle can works just fine. Uh, not a problem. Yeah, that's what I use for yeah. these. I prime with uh, rattle cans all the time, and it's yeah. Can't imagine them having an issue, considering that we've used rattle cans on all this stuff. So yeah, I don't know if you guys are watching. You can see I'm just sort of I'm just really going at it, uh, doing a lot of wet blending, just like last time. Uh, it's actually off camera, but I did bring my wet palette, the wet palette that I've been trying to use because everybody uh, talks about how great it is, and then every time I just go back to using, as you can see, my palette. Uh, hand, hand right here, the hand palette. <laughs> we the try to get them to use dropper bottles. We try to get them to use a wet palette. Yep. Use a wet hand. Yeah, yep. there you go. Technically, works the same, right? But when when I do on those rare occasions, I have managed to get into the hang of the wet palette. It it is really helpful just to have, you know, those colors just sitting there, sort of pre blended for you, because the the paint does dry fairly quickly on your hand because your hand is warm. And so it's going to promote uh, faster than normal um, evaporation, obviously. And I could also see if it was cold, you wouldn't want to do it either. All right, is this dry yet? Yeah, let's get that another coat in just a second. Um, so yeah, trying to think of things to keep talking about. Oh well, we got Is a question. Anybody in, in the room? Uh, you, okay. Uh, yeah, I was waiting for you to, uh, if you had a break there. Uh, so we've got uh, someone asking about potential paint starter sets. That's an interesting subject. Uh, what you think would be a good starter set for, um, for cars? For cars in general. Uh, I mean, that one's a little hard just because there are so many out there. Um, you'd want something. I would say. Unless you really want to go the non-metallic metal route, you're going to want something with some kind of metal in it, um, some kind of steel uh, or silver color for weapons and hubcaps and stuff like that. But other than that, I mean, I think I feel like the paint sets often. Um, I mean, there's just no telling what the mix of colors is going to be, and you're going to really want to make sure that it's just something that you like. Um, I, are you going for like, like a, uh, arena race car, yeah. cars, or are you going for like wasteland burned out look? Yeah. Yep. I, th I think. Cause what I, what I see a lot with the starter sets, um, some are just like, some just start you off. Like I think the games workshop ones just start you off with what they think are going to be some really frequently used colors. Um, and then. I've seen some by, I think it was, was it Reaper, Vallejo, Model Color? Maybe, probably Army Painter, actually. Army Painter makes, <laughs> Army Painter makes a lot of starter sets. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I feel like those that I've seen are very much more about, like, color themes, right? So they're more like a natural, yeah. sort of like Ranger color scheme, or then... This question about what colors and or washes would be most appropriate for cars. I would definitely recommend the Army Painter yeah. wash. For sure, I I so they got a really good ink, ink and wash set. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, the ink and wash sets are good. I would so I'm going to talk about starter sets in general. I think kind of leading off what you guys were saying, I don't like the Citadel starter sets that much. They're not that well balanced. Essentially, what you're going to end up, especially Car Wars, I think you're going to end up using like four of the eight colors or something like that. And yeah, and that's it, that's kind of what happened with me. I bought one a couple years back because it came with a set of clippers, and it mm -hmm. was a really good deal. Um, but then it's not a good deal because you end up not using half the paints. Yeah, there were a lot that I didn't, that I just was never, never used. Yeah, they weren't really didn't really have anything to do with any colors I was using at the time. Yeah, so I would say, kind of going back to what you guys are saying, the uh, army painter sets are pretty good. Um, 
if you know what the thing is you need to know the direction you want to aim as far as painting if you go go that way i still honestly would say just pick colors you like and go and buy it individually because generally i think a lot of starter sets have that issue where it's essentially the starter set you end up using like half the paints in it and then the other half just kind of never get used uh, so having an idea of like, oh, I want to have a metallic, I'll get this particular metallic, or I want a red, I'll pick this red kind of thing, generally what I'd go for. But if you, it, but for starters, I think Army Painter is a pretty good starting point. But even if you go with a normal, um, a normal set for your base colors, like that Army Painter wash set is a yep. really great, it's got like light and dark washes of several different sure. colors. Those can enhance whatever base that you The wash have. sets I think are a lot more usable in a general sense, uh, for sure. Um, also, I'd say uh, if you're gonna get a starter set, keep it low on the lower end. Don't do so. Don't do what Donnie don't does. This is a hunter lesson. <laughs> don't buy the big, gigantic paint set. Uh, I, it's not even this. so. I bought two. I bought the the Vallejo model model color and the Vallejo Game Air sets, the big ones. Yeah. Those things are humongous. But I will say. It's taken me a few years, and I've eventually gotten to about a third of the paints. <laughs> so that's where we're at right now. Uh, Most of those starter sets are like either 8 or 16 colors, and that's a good starting point. Because mm -hmm. usually you have the major primary colors. You have a black, you have a white. Yeah. Maybe you have a metallic color as well. If you combine that with a wash set, you're pretty much ready to go. Yeah, painting almost anything. You might want one or two standalone different metallics. Yeah, yeah, and especially for car wars, I think having a couple different metallics is nice because you can do like I was mentioning with that uh, car that we had on on the turntable, having like that metallic that you have for the car, the panels, and maybe doing a different metallic for the guns or something like that. Uh, something to keep in mind. But yeah, a great question. Great, really great question. Hope we answered that as well as we could there. <laughs> Hope that helps. Again, we're not, only one of us here is an actual pro, but we've all had experience painting in some regard. <laughs> yeah, I um, because I I'm just such a fan of the P3 paints. Um, I just don't I don't really look at the uh, at starters very often because I just don't I, I I'm not gonna be that crazy about them. But you don't have to be as picky as me. Um, P3 did used to do starter sets, but I don't think they sell them anymore. I actually have a P3 starter set, oddly enough. Uh, I don't have a lot of P3 paints. I only have one box. I think I got it on sale years ago, but it was the Kador uh, starter set because I had a, I have a Kador Army for War Machine. <laughs> yeah, and so, I think that would be like some reds. Yeah, definitely it's, some metal. It's like a I think they like always one had metallic. Two. Okay, maybe and, just one. I think it was like one metallic and like a dark red, a lighter red, and a lighter red, and then there was another like a, maybe a white or something like that or a gray. Yeah, for fur. It wasn't a huge set. It was like one of the, and that, that's why I got it because it was only like five paints. It wasn't like a crazy big set. And I really, it was more like I want to try this paint line out. I never ended up getting to try it. I still have them, but I haven't actually opened them yet. I was just such a huge uh, Privateer Press fan back in the day, just so hardcore that it was just unthinkable to me that I would use any other brand. And even even though now I like, I'm not nearly so interested in them i still just i still just really like the game still a great company uh awesome, awesome company love their stuff uh yeah but i mean like I, but I, I'm, not, I'm not i'm not i'm not so individually company focused on brands anymore i'm, I'm similar to that where it's like yeah because back exactly day, that, I, that's kind of what i mean it yeah. was like that was that was like you know when i was younger you're younger you feel like you for, for whatever reason you have you develop those loyalties you're in a club essentially. right you're exactly. like it's it's kind of like being a a fan of a particular brand of electronic or something like that but if you're a fan of apple or something like that you're in that ecosystem you feel like yep. i need to get stuff except within like something like electronics you're kind of forced to be in that ecosystem but with paints it's just like it's like oh yeah here's this guide to painting this mini that you like and it just so happens to use all these paints you can just go buy <laughs> these names of paints there you go it's a lot easier when you're a kid i mean that's what that's how i got into paints so don't, I, I pretty much all I had was a GW store, and I went into a GW store and got the old hex. Uh, do y'all remember the old pa paint pots with the screw off tops that had like oh yeah, pots? those I, were dreadful. Those I started in the worst era of, of of the bottles. People have complained about lots of different eras of Citadel paints drying out, but the the, the one that I started with was the plastic hexes that had the screw off. They didn't off just tops. dry out. They they, they dried, dried up closed. immediately. Yeah. yeah, and you they were. I remember having a wrench at the desk that I needed to use to get into this. Yep. Yep. That's not a joke. That is not a joke. It pretty much felt like a hex key design, cause and and if you got in like his paint immediately would get into the into the 
uh, the recesses. The recesses. Yeah. You're just done. You can't close it ever again. And so then you squeeze. You, you know, you give that that little squeeze, and it's just, and now it's like you've just. And then uh, you're done for life. You can't open it up again. It's become Fort Knox. Yeah. I I didn't have a wrench. I had needle nose pliers that we used to get. <laughs> same same. Concept. Yeah. I mean, you could. It wasn't impossible, no. but it was just like, why on earth? I actually. I found one of those bottles the other day. I was going through some old uh, stuff, reorganizing, and I found green ink, which I don't even think they do ink anymore, uh, but I used to use their... Now they call it shade, like these well, little... Now it's actually... But shades. back then it was actually inks. Yeah, like, I think... Yeah. Inks. That's what I started Yeah. They, they did... They changed them pretty much to shades, but they didn't make them ink-based. They made them, like, you know, normal acrylic-based, I think. But back then they did the inks. I used it for warp stone for Skaven, and it was awesome. I used to get rocks out of my driveway, just wash them off, and paint them green, and put the ink on it. And really? I found my original ink. It was a lot of fun. Huh. You can still get ink. Uh, Vallejo makes yep. inks. Vallejo does inks. Uh, or you can use artist inks. Uh, well, and so so does P three. That's actually Army, yep. I think we talked about this last time. The P three stuff is the one thing that they do sell they in do, the dropper yep. bottle in in inks. Yeah, <clears throat> it's interesting. There's a lot of there's a, a lot of cool techniques. We might eventually look into some of these. Right now we're mostly doing like Ben's doing wet blending, dry brushing, stuff like that. But there are some interesting uh, techniques that people are starting to use a lot more of, like uh, uh, enamel washes, things like that. I want to try some of that stuff out in the future for myself personally. Um, obviously, I've started using an airbrush quite a bit and trying to use a lot more of that i actually just uh my uh my dad likes to do christmas shopping and he's very much into like he wants to get us something that we'll use and i and he asked us way ahead of time and i was like you know what i'll ask him for a new nice airbrush so we're gonna see if i get uh, i'm gonna see if i can get a ni like a nice uh fine tipped airbrush for christmas something i'll actually use um I mean, most airbrushes, you if the tip is something that you can change out. You can, and I actually, so I own two airbrushes, and I have, I have one that's a fine needle and one that's a, a more of like a base coating priming type thing, a wider spray. The fine needle's nice, but it's not fine enough for what I want to use it for. I want to actually try to use it for painting uh, a little more, and I can't get it to get fine enough to get really in there, so... Yeah, I'm gonna try something that's a little finer. I, I and I think it's just that the one I got, which is a great model, I use a Badger Patriot. Nice, really good starter airbrush, dependable, doesn't really clog too often. Yeah. Uh, but it can only go so fine with the nozzle combinations that it has for it. So. Um, and the thing is, the the better the airbrush, the more maintenance yep, it will for require sure. of you. I'm sticking with so I, we're just again talking <clears> about <throat> ecosystems. So I'm sticking within the Badger ecosystem on the one that I want to get. So I'm going to, hopefully that'll make maintenance a little bit easier for me, but, uh, we'll see how it goes. That's funny. I, I've never known, I mean, I know they exist. I've never known anyone personally to move to a higher end badger. You know, it's always, uh, you go to a, like better, a different brand. Yeah. Water. else. A lot is another, I don't good, know why. they have good starter brands too. Actually, a is a pretty good one to start with. You could get an Awada Eclipse or something like that. I think, yeah. Neo, yeah, Neo is a good one. You see, I, I find those like Michaels and Hobby Lobby and stuff like that. It's crazy. And you use those those uh, coupons that give you like forty percent off yep. one item. Boom, you get a forty percent off a, uh, and then go back to the next week, get the same coupon for forty percent off you compressor. Get compressor. Yeah. Those yep, yep. That's all. The I last know. time I tried to use one, I couldn't find it. It was like I, it wasn't as good they, anymore. Like, yeah, it was only like thirty or something using them or something. They well, because they're worse. really good. I mean, like, I think whoever came up with that idea was like, well, this, you know, people just come here to buy yarn, so they'll get one thing of yarn. It's like, you guys do know you sell stuff. It's like $200. I mean, especially Hobby Lobby. They sell, like, furniture and stuff. You would think that, uh, <laughs> yeah, that that coupon might just go a little too far. Yeah, not for me. I'll use it all day. It goes, doesn't go far well, enough. for them. For <laughs> no, them, I know, I know. Not I'm for just, Hunter. I know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's, uh, yeah, generally I I would try to go for a different brand, but for me it's like like you said the the nicer the the airbrush the more maintenance it has, and I think what honestly didn't scare me off but kind of was just like the big telltale like this is not something that I want to have to deal with on a regular basis. I ordered the fine tip needle for my second Patriot to be like the fine tip airbrush that I was doing, and the needle was like ten dollars I think online. And the place I ordered it from mixed up an order with another order. So I got somebody else's airbrush needle instead of, and he got mine. And um, my airbrush needle was $10. And he had a harder Steenbeck, amazing uh, airbrush. But his was the exact same dimension needle. That's why I got mixed up. But it was $65. Wow. And I was like, I think I'll pass. 
I freaking bend those needles all the time. I don't know how I do it, but uh, I was just, what was I airbrushing? I think it was just like something I just wanted to be a flat black and it just wasn't spraying right. And I was like, oh, I bent the needle again. And you can kind of like bend them back carefully, yeah. but uh, it's tough, but it's yeah. still just like, I, I, I hate to think about doing that with a $65 one. And that's exactly it. Like a, an amazing piece of equipment. Uh, I don't doubt it. Like tons of, tons of professional painters use them and I think it's awesome. And, but then I was like, you know what? If I screw something up, which I'm bound to do, I will, not, I will never forget myself. Don't you, don't you want to know what the guy was painting with that $65 needle? I want to, I want to know how mad he was or? when he opened up this package and got oh, my yeah. $10 Badger needle. Is he doing minis too, or is he doing like some amazing like oh. like illustration of, you know, who knows? could be anything. Could be a, uh, could be a hobby, a model hobbyist instead. Maybe he's just decorating cakes or something. So that's a good, that's an interesting question. So how how do you determine what color scheme you want to use? Do you just kind of look at it and say, I want this to be like? So the question was like, do I do you look at something and say it wants you want it to be blue, or do you have a do you just pick something, or do you base it on maybe art that we've used in the game? I definitely colors? didn't base it on any art that we used in the game. I was just given these maze. No one even told me that there was art, and then uh, later I think Phil was kind of like, oh yeah, that was the point. Like we didn't want them to look the same. Um. So yeah, I didn't even know there was art. Um, honestly, like it started with just like, uh, you know, I feel like doing yellow right now. I feel like doing green right now. This looks like it would be good orange. And then as the, uh, as I kept painting more and more cars, you know, we have like 36 cars, I think. And so obviously, or no, maybe 34, 30, how, no, it's 32. Cause there's, there's 12 in the starter and then four, Additional miniatures, that's what Penny, so there's 32. So you get past the original six colors on the spectrum real fast. Um, and then you have to start doing crazy stuff. So then it was just like, well, what haven't I done yet? But um, I don't know, I usually, I usually wanna do really bright, vibrant colors. Um, and even if I wanna do some, some junkyard thing, I'm gonna wanna put some orange and maybe some blues in there. Um, but yeah, it's really just like, at this point, it's just almost like what will look really, really striking, like maybe unrealistically striking, um, just a crazy color combination, and especially if it's one that I haven't really tried yet, because that's um, that's really what I just keep coming back to. But for the Car Wars cars, every single one of them is different. They're all owned by different drivers, and I like I've said before, I think of them all almost like pro wrestlers where they all, like in my mind, the, in the arena, every car has its own sort of persona and its driver and gunner have their own sort of persona and that's gonna be expressed by their car. So it's really just whatever crazy thing you wanna do. Um, a color wheel is helpful um, just because you, it, like, like with this guy, purple on the opposite of the color wheel is yellow. Um, Throw it up on the uh, turntable when we get a closer look at it. All right. Because it's that one that's drying, right? The Yeah. It's probably already ready for, like, coat four. Um, <laughs> no, really, it really will be coat four. And it's a little bit washed out. Um, light's a little bright. But it, the pur purple on the opposite from the color wheel is yellow. So purple and yellow go together a little bit well, but sometimes it can be a little bit too vibrant. So I went with um, kind of a yellowish green instead. Um, blended into uh, turquoise. So... Um, it's, 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 it'll, it'll provide a nice amount of contrast without being too crazy contrast. Um, yeah, let me do that next coat now. I mean, hopefully by the time we are finished and I'll put, uh, well, we can put, oh, darn things falling off. Hopefully by the time, uh, we're through today, we'll be able to do the cool thing on the windshield that I want to do. Yeah. That's the one. This is yeah. This is the one from last time, and what we've got up there now is and wow, you really, it's really blown out. I wish uh, it was a little bit more subtle. I could see the red a little better. Yeah, let's see if the overhead lights can. Sorry. How's that? That's a little better. Yeah, I think it's just the overhead lights. We tried to fix the white balance before the stream, and it just wasn't working for us. And uh, the. P3 paints do dry a bit glossy. Um, I think that's because they have a little bit more medium in them. 
but there may be something different about the medium from other hobby paints. So there's going to be a little bit of glossiness on these before they're done. But since it's always a good idea to uh, do some kind of varnish afterwards, if you're going to do a matte varnish anyway, then mm -hmm. that's that's not going to be a problem. So it's never really bothered me. Plus you might like it glossy, you never know. But yeah, I do a matte varnish on stuff. I think the problem, the biggest problem is just that, um, and, and the reason that varnishes help so much is every paint has like a slightly different amount of glossiness. So when you have... You might have some part of the model uh, that, that's like extra glossy True. and another part that's very matte just because that's, you know, they put a different amount of binder in in every paint depending on what the pigment is because um, some pigments have to go in thicker and so on. Um, so when you, when you put on that matte varnish or even if it's like a satin varnish, uh, everything goes to the same sort of level of... of of glossiness and sure. so it does it, it just sort of unifies the model so it's it's really helpful because it's usually when you're done painting it's not it's not all going to be glossy in the way you might like so even if you do want it glossy you're going to want to do a uh, maybe a gloss varnish rather than just leave it as is yeah that makes sense and you can also, if you like different consistencies or something like that, some people like to keep certain parts of it glossy. You can do like brush on varnish and things yeah. like that. Yeah. And that was like um, some people who use uh, true metallic metals really like to do that with their metallics for whatever reason. They think like, and it can look pretty pretty sharp in the case. Someone earlier told me that they really like your uh, windshield texture. Oh. Well, yeah, thanks. Um, a big part of that is the, uh, is again, it's the contrast. Um, so there's a lot, a lot of, the, the paint at the top is a lot lighter than the one at the bottom. Um, and additionally, there's, there's sort of a color contrast too. So the, uh, the white at the top for the lightest highlight isn't quite white. It has a little bit of yellow in it. And so there's a kind of weird color gradient going down where it's like yellow to green to almost a blue. And so that kind of creates a look like some of the really weird and fancy custom paint jobs that you see sometimes um, where they, you know, depending on how the light is hitting it, the little sort of metallic flecks in the paint. Um, and I'm talking about a real car now, like, like on real auto paint jobs, you'll see some where um, it'll look like, Part of it is red and part of it is blue because of the way that the the little flecks of metallic and the in the paint look, and so that's kind of like what I'm I'm trying to do um, with like an illusion rather than than um, metallic paint. <clears throat> ben, is the lighting okay for you? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a little uh, it's a little dark, but I think I can handle it. Uh. What I really want, and it's driving me crazy, I want like a nice bright highlight up here, and I can't quite get it the way that I want it. So I keep coming back to this one little area, and I'm just, I'm never quite getting it right, so I should probably just do is move on, because it doesn't quite have to be perfect. Sometimes these uh, weird sort of geometric shapes can be really tricky to figure out exactly how you want the highlights to go on them. I think I'm now I'm going to move to sort of blocking out if I have the tires and some of the other spaces that are still white right now from the primer because that can really help you see what's going on. Do you always prime white? Uh, these days I try to. Um, it's hard to get white. The white primer seems to be really popular, so a lot of times I end up with gray. But uh, 
Yeah, having a nice white base. For the longest time, I used gray because it's not quite like with white. Um, the shadows are a little less. They come in a little bit transparent because it's so bright. And if you pr prime black, the highlights are really hard to do because everything's so dark. So for years, I used gray because it's like in between. Um, but trying to go for these really saturated colors like I've been doing lately, it's it's a lot harder to get over a gray base. Um, and they show up, especially like a red like this, just shows up so much better if you start with white underneath. So I always go with white. But I, I am continuously fascinated by how many like amazing painters I see on Instagram that just paint over black. I don't know what weird magic sauce that they're using because... When I try to paint over black, it you, you see gray, you know, until you're like five layers in. And I see people doing stuff where it just, it just looks like they're painting. This is the color is going on perfectly black. over the black. Yeah, that's what it would seem like. So there may, I mean, there may just be, they may be using like some kind of oil or something strange. Um, that's just not even on my radar or something that I would use to paint models. Because outside of the hobby realm... Um, there are just a whole galaxy of different qualities of pigments and paints that you can go for. And it's possible that that's where these are coming from, that they're not the typical hobby paints that we think of, that it's a, like a much more expensive, um, serious art or illustration brand. <clears throat> I'm going to stick that back in there. Hopefully it'll stay put. Nope. I mean, I should have known that because it's wet. What I really need to do is get the push pin actually stuck a little bit into the interior plastic, and then it should stay put. All right, and let's get uh, underbelly blue. Let's do this for some of the metal areas, which I'll add a wash to in a bit. But yeah, usually I, I will sort of stick to the same color kind of for as long as I can, but you sort of reach a point where you need to go in and see how everything else is going to look too before you can really finalize it. Yeah, I'd really like to try an oil. I've seen really cool results with them. Oil, I mean, oils are amazing, but they are, I mean, they're, they're a whole other thing. You have yeah. to worry about spirits and... Uh, or turpentine. Yep, you have to keep turpentine around. Um, that's the big thing that stops me from trying it. Yeah. It's just the, uh, the setup and the investment. And one of the things back when I, I was uh, taking painting lessons was, um, you know, in, in art school was... Uh, there's like a really weird range of drying times. Like I remember like right. the white would dry within like a couple of hours, but the blues and greens could just like take weeks. You know, you'd go by like a painting a week later and like the blue was still a little bit wet in some areas. So that's a whole other weird thing. Um, I mean, it seems like it's really like something you, you only really want to try for really serious like competitive stuff just because who knows how long you'd be able to have to wait before you put it on the table and if you want to use a wash uh depending on what color you start with the base that could take it's going to take at least a few hours to dry no matter what and then there's additives you can add but they thin the paint some and then you have to sort of learn how to use them so now you're learning to use oils with additives and it's all yeah i mean obviously there's a reason why uh, even though science has given us acrylics, people still use oils because there's just, they really just do in the long run give a, almost always a superior appearance to acrylics. Um, well, it depends. It, it depends on what you're aiming for. Like oil washes are very interesting. I've watched a lot of videos on people using the oil washes and then uh, kind of dabbing them up with mineral spirits, stuff like that, enamel washes, oil washes, stuff like that. It's very interesting. Uh, it's a it's something I want to try at some point. I don't know if it's something I'd use for like an entire 
army or force or cars or anything like that, but it's yeah. there's some interesting I don't techniques. Think I use it on car. Yeah, unless it's like unless you're going for a very particular like dirty look or something like that. Maybe. Like one of those type of grim dark, I think. So those type of styles. Um, but yeah. I'm more of into colorful cars, I think. I don't really want to do a, a... At worst, I'd do something like the... the Was it Butcher? Is that his name? Butcher, yeah. Yeah, where we did the uh, drive rush and stuff like that. That's kind of cool, but... I don't want it to be so dark that I can't see it. When, now, what color should I start with the windshield? Should it be blue? It could be blue. I would have said green, green, but you're doing green on the purple one. Right. So I'd say blue on that one. Blue. All right, Hunter, you're the boss. <laughs> I am not the boss. <laughs> this is not true. I'm not your supervisor in any regards. No. <laughs> There's no method to choosing color. So. It's Ask Hunter. It's Although Ask you Hunter. you can sort of order me around because if you need like a, an image to tweet or something, then you could be like, Ben, you must do this thing for me. And, I don't think I, like, I can I still, I still don't think I can do that. Technically, you're supposed to, you're yeah. supposed to ask Sabrina to ask yes. me. I have to ask your actual supervisor. I need this uh, set of Star Wars movies painted up. It's totally for some Twitter photos. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> Ben, I need I need 32 cars painted up. It may <laughs> look like it's my comp copies, but actually, <laughs> it's for work. <laughs> I also need to tweet some photos, Ben. So. Uh, Brandon, uh. Jimmy, me, and Philip, uh, and Randy, <laughs> and Sam all need our... I'll need some cars our, painted. Our, our personal demo sets. Our is that what I'm? Is that what I'm really painting here? <laughs> our personal. <laughs> I demo thought sets. these were for SJ games. No, Are you guys gonna. I mean, pock, aren't we all SJ in? games? Aren't we all a family here? No, that's true. These are from. Actually, I don't know where these are from. We these just had some are pictures. some of the prototypes. Oh, okay. These are some of the first ones we got back. I do have, uh, pure energy. The one that is on the table, the the rotator right now is. Uh, that is an actual final one. That one as, is my favorite name of all. As ones is now. Butcher. Because it reminds me. Of, what's that? What's the? Um, there's a song where it's do, 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 pure energy. Do. I love I it. It's I, so good. I, I love. Feel like it. I should know that. I love it. You. It, it's. It is, an older song. <laughs> so. <laughs> Not taking shots, but I'm sorry. It sounds. It sounds like it should be on like the Mortal Kombat soundtrack or something. It, it wasn't, but it. Like but. It's, um, no, it's not. It, that's just the breakdown in it. I think the name of the song is Pure Energy. Oh, Jimmy just started the song. <laughs> yeah, information. What's on your mind? Pure Energy. Yeah, it's sorry. Pure Energy's name is like in parentheses. All right, so I think this might need. A couple more coats, but I'm just going to go for it. So what I wanted to try to do, I had this cool idea the other day for, like, a painted-on heads-up display on the windshield. Ooh. All, like, crazy and futuristic looks. So right now I'm going with the black to, like, get in that crevice where I got some windshield paint. Then I'm going to see if I can't do a cool freehand job and do a neat, like, targeting reticle and maybe some other weird jazz on there that looks all science-y to... Uh, <laughs> To make it look cool. That's our pull quote for today's video. Sciency. Sciency jazz. Sciency jazz. <laughs> Just some some heads up science some ja jazz. Some jazz noodling. That's, uh, that's like what they have in uh, Cowboy Bebop. Yes. Hugs. Is that what that is? Yeah, science jazz. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I just got. I thought you were. I thought you were aiming at the heads up display, not the science. Yeah. Hey, hey, that's that, science, Joe. Don't do it. Too, don't that. do it too close. We will get copyrighted. <laughs> well, it's, like, uh, it's in the future, and they have enough science. Yeah, it's science they can jazz. Incorporate jazz into the displays. How they roll. Yeah. All right. So whenever you, you whenever you're gonna do a freehand thing, it helps a lot to have a reference. But it, barring that, you want a really clear picture in your head of what you're doing um, or just a whole lot of faith in in what you're going to do. So I already sort of practiced with something similar to this. So uh, I think I can just dive in. So what we're going to start with, we're going to do some weird bars down the side. So we're going to go down that side. So what I got here is a cooler, hopefully paler blue than what is already on the windshield. And we're gonna go down the other side.
Then we're going to add some little sort of hatches like this. This is also going to look a little retro sciencey jazz. Uh, Because I feel like Car Wars has like some of there's there's sort of a retro feel to be had with some of them. It's like retro futurist kind of. Yeah, right? exactly. And I think this car is like a pretty good example of that because it has like it just sort of has characteristics from like all over the place, you know. That one reminds me a lot. So it's got like kind of like some of the. Where's my wife? The bulbous things from like the fifties or something like that. Yeah, um, so like some of the swoops, but it's very future. It's got that like kind of future. So it looks like something you'd from like a heavy metal video, like the the movie Heavy Metal. Yeah, like it looks like kind of like the taxi from Heavy Metal. Do you ever use? Uh, it's a question from uh, Mar uh, Mark. Uh, do you ever use magnifying lenses like a jeweler? I can't because to get it where it's in focus, it's literally this close to my eye. So I can't like I can't get the paintbrush in there, but I've tried, yeah. And I I there are some things where I just like like I see other painters do, and I'm like they must have used a lens, and because other I just don't see how you can get that level of detail on like an eye or something. I saw a Korean miniature painter who uses this like fifteen hundred dollar setup where it's a Jeez. it's a camera that's like focused on this one spot and it's got like a huge magnification and then it goes it's on this rig and then he's got a screen over here that he looks at and it's essentially he's painting a tiny like like space marine face but it's like he's able to paint like the most high detailed like crisp looking thing it looks like a portrait but it's like on the size of the end of a pin you've almost got to get used to like it's a complete remote, remote, yes. Like remote skill. Yeah, he. Yeah, that's the weird thing is he's not looking at the mini at all. He's like actually he's kind of sitting sideways. He's like staring. Yeah. All right. So can you guys see that? We've got um, yeah. some bars down the side with some hatches going on. So that's step one. Let's do some other weird stuff on the bottom. Let's. Uh, what do these little things I'm about to paint mean? I don't know, but they look sciency. And that's, that's they're the science point. jazz. They're, what do y'all want They're the from science them? jazz. How dare you ask Ben what those mean? So we're going to do... Uh, I like off-center things. We're going to put some little bars here as well. Oh, these, I'm having a hard time getting these straight the way I want them. Yeah, I've tried using the magnifying lenses and stuff. It didn't work for me either. All right, so this is one of those instances where uh, one of the most important things with freehand is it's about uh, subtracting as much as adding. So I've added these bars, but the tops aren't as crisp as I want. They kind of taper off like the shape of the brush. But uh, we can fix that. much water on the brush. Still too much water on the brush. Hunter, I just thought of this. Do you feel awkward in here? You're the only one without a ponytail. <laughs> what do you feel about that, that short-haired man? I'm, I'm pretty thrilled about it, to be honest. I, used to, I used to have really long hair, and uh, I'm glad I don't have it anymore. It was the worst. I'm probably going to chop this off eventually, but I'm enjoying it for Take now. advantage of it while you can. As soon as, I, as soon as I cut my hair, I started losing my hair, so that was really fun. Uh-oh. You use it or lose Apparently. it. Yeah, that's what it said. I'm, I'm, the, I'm, I'm, I'm yep. the youngest person in this room, and I've lost the most hair between all of us. You all look like some kind of weird Adonises comparatively, hair-wise. 
I don't know exactly how old Brandon is, but I think I'm the second youngest, and I think I have the grayest hair in here. I don't. You are the oldest, Brandon. I think. I think Jimmy. You and Jimmy are no offense, Brandon. I think you and Jimmy are in a close eat bin. It's pretty close. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, thought Jimmy I, had... I don't know. The the mustache puts him over the top. It's one of those things. It's like you said. You said hair, and that mustache is pretty killer. Pretty tough. This has become a hair battle, not a miniature painting stream. Yeah, I started talking trash, and now I'm like too now focused you, to defend myself. I have to put, now you can't even finish. You can't even finish your science jazz. Dang it, it's stuck in my head. I can hear the whole song now. I want to know. All right, so now we have some weird bars here. What are they measuring? I'm not sure, but uh, they just kind of look neat. They look kind of neat. Yeah, throw it on the, th let's start on the turntable. See if oh, it's, it's still not done, though. Just okay, then done. when you're finished, sorry. I thought you were, I thought you were showing it off finished. My no, 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 no. you got to stop and measure your progress. Yeah. Make sure you're heading the right bar. My bad. Well, also, I mean, this is sort of supposed to be a paint along, so I can't just like sit here and then like. No, no, no! I got just finish the no, whole I appreciate thing. The... I want everybody to see you... the progress. If I saw anything measuring anything, it could just be so you can line stuff up. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It's targeting equipment, right? Right. For that, for for me, it would be for the one gun that's left in my car, which is my handgun that I'm like aiming out of my my, my car to shoot. You're not driving with the AK-47. I'll do it. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Massive targeting front on the, on the front of the car. The only one left is the shooter on the back. Yeah, pretty much. A Knight Rider-esque voice telling you, what have you done to me? Michael. It hurts, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Remember they actually did a remake of that a few years ago? They've done multiple weird remakes of Knight Rider for some reason. A movie or a TV show? They did a TV they show did a called TV show. called Night Rider Two Thousand. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. And then again, much more recently. Dude, I I no joke. I really wish we'd go back to putting Two Thousand on any of this stuff. Now that we're in like twenty twenty one, I I think that would be even funnier now, just because it's like like whatever Two Thousand. Like it's but it, it was it was never supposed to be funny to them. Though. No, it wasn't. It was supposed to be futuristic. But it turns out when you make something in nineteen ninety seven and call it something Two Thousand. Does it? It's like oh, three years, huh? <laughs> Congratulations. My my favorite uh, of the uh, Knight Rider esque shows was always Airwolf. Yeah, because it was like it, also had a it was song. literally the same show but with a helicopter. Yep. Slightly better song, in my opinion. The song is better than Knight Riders. No offense. I, the the voice of Knight Rider rules, but the song is just the doo -doo 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 -doo. Right. So then we get we put the actual like targeting reticle in the middle, and so I like to think that uh, that gets bigger and smaller. Like the close, like like when you got the guy lined up, then it's down to almost like the size of a quarter. So right now uh, he does not actually have a target lined up. He needs to get one, and then it'll shrink or maybe move around. Uh, on the screen and follow it up so that would be like a really fun and interesting way to paint on you know that you have like the onboard targeting computer yeah. equipment or something like that um it's like trench run reminiscent from star wars yeah, yeah. so yeah now now, now, now that i've done that on. we'll put that guy on the uh, turntable whoa oh, it's yeah. still a little bright but it's sort of Dulls, it goes down a little bit. I think that's just because literally the turntable's right by the light, closer yeah. to it. But a little less washed out. And it's too bad I didn't bring that purple, or he might be nearly finished up today. I mean, he is pretty close to finish. Well, I did bring the purple. It's too bad the purple dried up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, too bad we don't have the purple. That looks great. I actually knew, I, I knew it was almost out because I ordered some more and I have an unopened pot of it sitting at home, which I guess is not going to be that way once I get back because I'm going to need it. You're going to open it up, it's dried out already? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, nope. I think I might return it <laughs> at that point. Some colors are just like that. They dry out faster, they get thick. One guy, I was at a, I was at a local game store here in Austin just uh, hanging out. And one of the, uh, someone came in, they're like, you know what I said earlier today that I didn't need a receipt for this paint? Because why would I need a receipt for one bottle of paint? Well, I opened it up and it's dried out. <laughs> <laughs> and the, I looked at it too. They let me see it. It's, it was completely unopened before he got it. He opened it up and it, just, it was a brick. 
It's crazy. I, I can sympathize with Mason here. BRB, I'm just going to free in a perfect tiny circle. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I will say, Ben has a particularly steady hand. Uh, you don't have to, like, this is, this is more like, here's some options, here's some stuff. Uh, I'm with you guys. I'm not as good as Ben at this stuff. Uh, so once I start painting my stuff up, it's not going to be the same way. But we'll be able to do different techniques and things like that, too. And then, um, show you a speed painted car. That's where I specialize in. If you really want something like that, though, and you don't feel like your hand is steady enough, you can get a tiny sticker, maybe. Oh, yes. Yeah, or something oh, yeah. like that. Trace around the outside of it. Mm -hmm. There are options. Yep. Yeah. I've started, I've oh, started yeah, the decals. using a lot more stenciling and stuff like that. I'm not a freehander. That's not going to be me. That is a funny comment. Let me just BRP. Let me free in this <laughs> tiny circle. I have been watching your your hand. You have a very particular like way of holding your brush that makes it very steady. Is oh it, yeah, because I'm bracing you're, you're, it again. You're braced, and then you're braced again, and then it's also at this angle where it's like very, yep. very controlled. Um, normally the angle would actually be like this. <laughs> but you're trying to be better. Right, exactly. I'm I'm trying to show a little bit on that screen. Which is probably also a little part of the reason why I'm having such a hard time getting this, uh, this perfect highlight the way I want. Oh well, but that uh, would always be tricky. It just look, it looks incredible. <laughs> it's not. The it way doesn't I look want. spectacular. It only <laughs> looks incredible. <laughs> Oop, I actually did throw it. That was supposed to be a fake throw, but it came loose from the it came loose from the plug. I just cut to the yeah. Right where's the, where's where's the drunk cameraman technical difficulties graphic? <laughs> we'll fix it in post. Yeah, we'll fix. Yeah, this isn't live or anything, right? You Does guys can edit that out, right? Look okay. Yeah, <laughs> you guys can edit. Well, that's the thing. These are Thanks, durable. Jimmy. These are durable. This is not actually it's true. flimsy, easily broken plastic. Well, there's also not a lot of stuff that like there's there, since they're all one piece models. There's not you're not gonna like drop it and knock a gun off or something like that generally. Yeah. Yeah. So Jimmy picked it up, no problem. Yep. That was actually that was a stress test. That was that was intentional. We planned it. Planned it all, folks. Yep. Because he was stressed. Yeah, I love the way that blue and the red look. That looks just that's just a cool contrast. Someone just texted me. I bet it was somebody watching to be like dumbass. <laughs> no one thinks you're dumb, Ben. Except us. But, but <laughs> except all the people that saw what you did. <laughs> except, except everyone here. But it's fine. I assume someone's going to clip that on Twitter. Please clip that. <laughs> Incredible. Well, they, then they also get a bunch of like voice clips of me out of context. So it's like, I'm Finn and I hate this model. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. <clears throat> Like, well, it must be true. I saw a video of it. <laughs> I remember when he hurled it across the room. <laughs> or you can do a clip of me throwing it and then, like, uh, chop in, like, a terrible car accident stock footage. Real, oh, like, right afterwards. Yeah, uh, I, I don't remember if anyone, or I don't know if any of you guys remember this old skit, the skit, uh, Toons is the Driving Cat oh, yeah, from SNL. It would always cut, it, 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 it would always cut to that same image of the car, like, driving off the cliff. <laughs> so you throw it and just cuts that car driving off the yeah. cliff and blowing up. Yeah, there's probably a Scott Goodrich saying. Yeah, I think yeah. it's probably public domain. Domain. Uh, domain. You need to figure that out. He passed his driving test, but I guess it was just lucky. We'll just go back <laughs> it's one of my favorite nonsensical skits ever. For all the dumb things that they made into Saturday Night Live movies, I wonder why Toonses never <laughs> did it. We should do a promo driver card of Toonses. How do we make that happen? Oh my god, that would be incredible. I mean, there are supposed to be... I, I don't know how much of this made it into the final, but one of the things that we talked about in the background, there, there is genetic engineering. We know that much. So there could be 
you know, a I'll cat a genetically engineered to drive a car. We'll run it by Steve. Uh, he hasn't seen it. We could just, if we run <laughs> by the concept of a driving cat to Steve and see if he likes it. Yeah. And then I'll run by Sam and Randy separately. Yeah. To see if they know what toots the driving cat is. <laughs> and then we can combine this knowledge into one working promotional car. Toots is the car wars cat. You had a chance to play Car Wars yourself, though? I actually haven't. No, not the final version. I, I, I have to, I'm going to have to look at some uh, how to play videos that you guys did uh, over the weekend because I'm, I'm demoing it at Gen Con. You are. So uh, if you sit down so at my guys, table. Um, ben, ben doesn't get to play games. We make sure of that around here. No, it's, ben, a, it's ben actually like, on. yeah. <laughs> we, we specifically. If there are any sure. fantasy trip fans watching, you guys are the reason why I don't know how to play Car Wars. Because I was working on hexagram one, two, three, etc., or uh, advent fantasy trip adventures, or something awesome like that. Yep, ben no regrets. No regrets. We'll, we'll get you up to speed. We we just actually uploaded a couple of videos. If you guys haven't checked those out, you know, yet. I mean, while I'm here, you could teach me if you know how to play, because I should know. Yeah, we'll we'll hook you up. That counts as work, right? Ish. <clears throat> work like. Oh no! You, you, did you really do it? What? What have you done, Jimmy? Jimmy already clipped the, uh, <laughs> he clipped you throw it. <laughs> it looks so good because it's like one, it's just like, it looks like you flick it. <laughs> That's great. Uh, I doesn't love a good blooper card. reel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But don't worry, guys. Ben will be up to speed. It's really not a hard game, so Ben won't have to uh, catch up on much. It's a pretty if it's you, easy to get started for sure. We'll be doing uh, so just so everyone knows what's going on. We since we do have the pre-orders going on right now on Warehouse Twenty Three, go pre-order it now. And if you haven't got it already, and check out the new stuff. We have an Uncle Al's catalog. I think is one of the things that's new, or Uncle Al's something. I'll double check oh, it. It's, it's uh, part of the pre-order. Yes, that's well. Uncle pre-orders. Uncle Al's in the latest incarnation is a it's a set of cards. It's a set of really weird yes. kind of goofy equipment that didn't really fit in yes, with any we, of the other we, expansions. But it, it didn't make it to the Kickstarter because it was still being worked. Uncle Al's Arena Supply. That's what. It, oh, that's what it's Arena Supply. So oh, okay. Uncle Al's Arena Supply. So it is different is, than what I thought. That's the terrain. I didn't know we had announced it just yet, but that is the terrain because that's actually by a third party that we're working with. Oh, okay. So we can, didn't sell it directly. It came, it came up after the fact. Uh, but if you're interested in that stuff, it's like pylons and uh, uh, barricades the, the and stuff like that. Called the Car Wars Uncle Al's upgrade. Yes. Now, Uncle Al's Arena Supplies number one. It has like barrels, uh, traffic barrier. cones, jersey barriers, uh, stuff like that. We'll probably, I believe those are 3D printed that, and uh, we're working with someone to do those. Uh, we'll probably get a, a few sets of those and paint them up here. Probably not the uh, cones. I think we'll leave those orange, but I think we can do some dry brushing and stuff like that on the jersey barriers and the barrels and stuff like that. Make them look, you know, pro, you know. And yeah, we're, oh, sorry, I uh, got off track there, but the next couple, next pretty much month of streams, if not more, is going to be dedicated to uh, Car Wars. So as these car, as the kicks or the uh, pre-orders are going on, as the Kickstarter is going to be delivered and stuff like that, uh, hopefully soon. Then we're still waiting, like I said, we're still waiting on a couple containers to make it across, but uh, it's on its way. It's on its way. Yep. We're getting closer. Lots of boxes already here. I've already been conscripted into service by Warehouse 23. Yep. Philip is... Uh, is that right? I'm going to be asked. packing boxes. I've avoided it for a long time. I haven't had to do any Kickstarter packing, so I decided that this is the one where I have to be punished. <laughs> I'll probably be there with you. That's fine. We'll get it done even faster. He'll be at Jim. He'll be at Gen Con. Well, that's I will be convenient. At Gen Con. Well, that's convenient for all of you guys. That's wow. That's way to get out of work, guys. <laughs> no, they no, they're that's a party. I've been there a few times. It's crazy. It's it's, crazy. Yeah, you're only on your feet all day. Yeah. I don't know. What you're Projecting talking about. your voice as loudly as possible. I do that all. I do that all every time. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're gonna be math masked up. So. That is the that is the convention policy. Indeed, don't get to go in without a mask on. Have we, have we considered three D models? Um, I mean, they, that's how they were made. I think they're asking if we're if we considered selling like the STLs. No, we're not no. going to be doing STLs for these. No. Uh, the, the a lot of the early prototypes were done on three uh, D prints and stuff they, like that. But they were done with the, the what is it, the upgrade 
security one. A resin for resin for resin yeah. resin yeah. 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 Make sure this stuff just doesn't quite have the. It always has those those yeah striations and stuff like that. That man, that highlight looks great, man. Oh, Even from here, you. like I'm across, I'm like a decent ways away from Ben. I can I can still see it off camera. It looks great. I was thinking of maybe doing a red glaze over it to really get the red to pop. That's um. I think I brought the red ink. Yeah, that's what this stuff is really good for. The P3 red ink, it's more of like a color, it's almost like a color enhancer rather than a shade. You can put it over sort of a red area and it just make it, make it even redder. redder. Yeah. Pretty cool. Nice. So what else? Is the vehicle guide? That was in the Kickstarter, wasn't it? I believe so, yes. I okay. don't know if it is yet. Uh, if it, or if it's just one of those Kickstarter things. Some things, because sometimes those bundle things came with multiple items that ended up packaged with it via Kickstarter. I'm just saying, because that one's pretty cool because it has sort of, um, that explains what all the weapons and stuff on all these guys are. What's it called? The vehicle guide. Because um, every car is like a potential sample build, and they're all detailed in the vehicle guide to like give you advice on different play styles. So I was kind of thinking about that as I'm painting Stiletto here, about the rockets and this and that, and yada, yada, yada. Okay. I know I made a Kickstarter graphic for it, though, so it must have yeah. been... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a thing, but yeah. I don't think they are... I don't think it's part of the pre-orders at this time. It's probably also a pretty good collection of background fiction. But don't quote me on that. So, just... I don't know. I think this guy's getting close to being ready for wash on some things. It's got these cool rockets. I don't think I've painted any rockets yet. So those can be anywhere, any color. Somebody out there needs to paint little, tiny little freaking shark teeth and little eyes yeah. on some rockets. That man is could you. Could it be you? I, 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 I mean, I could. Let's save that for another another one. Let's not we do that. Could. We could. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how much time we have left. We might not be. We're able a little bit to over. So that oh, wherever, we're a little bit wherever over. Wherever you okay. want. To, but we're not in a rush because we started a little bit late. So. Okay. Well. Just fit, figure. You know, whenever you find a good stop point, we'll show off what you did, and we'll. You know, if anyone else has any other questions, feel free to ask while we're still. Plugging away. Yeah. Next week we'll I be just... playing. We'll be a little short staff potentially. With, Jimmy and Ben will be. Hunter will be playing week. himself. I'm going to be running bo around both sides of the table. Yep. Just, no, it'll, I think Philip will actually be coming in from the warehouse to play. Oh, so. isn't he going to be busy? Doesn't I mean, maybe. I don't know. Want if we're, their orders filled? We're not packing them next week. I don't think. Oh. I, we're still waiting on on containers. We still have like two containers left for car wash stuff that All we're waiting right. on. So, I wish it'd be nice if they just hopped in, if they appeared. But unfortunately, we can't really start packing until we get all the stuff. They are packing stuff for the fantasy trip, though. Fill in a lot of fantasy trip stuff. So. Yeah, he'll be coming in, helping me out. Brandon will be here. Jimmy and Ben will just be out having a vacation at Gen Con. <laughs> yep. Not working at all. Exposing just ourselves playing, to Delta variants. Just playing games with people for fun. I don't get out. 
what, how'd this happen? But <laughs> yeah, whatever. All right, maybe this is good for now. You sure that didn't sound like a good for now? It feels like there's a, one more step in Ben's heart. There, there's always one more step. Just put one more step in. I, I don't want you to end. Uh, I don't want you to. How do you know when you're done? End with regrets. You, you. Sometimes I just have to say, you know, no more. He has to hold his hand back. He's the exact opposite. That's of me. that's like, honestly <laughs> that's one of the worst things with uh, commissions for me is like I just want to like. This I promise this is not in any way meant to be self-deprecating, but you will always see like one little thing. You're like that could look better. That doesn't look as good as it could, and you'll just spend like hours on it. So when it's my own models, you know, I can just be like, whatever, you know, it's fine. I'm gonna put it on the tabletop. Nobody will notice. It's fine. But if I do a commission, that's when it's just like, oh man. With your own models, you can always have it later, right? Right. So you yeah. you do a commission, you like put it in a box and mail it away, and then you're like, well, what if they get it and they see this this stupid part and they don't want to hire me again? <clears throat> I will frequently. So you feel like you just gotta fix every little thing, and make it perfect. I'll frequently see Ben post stuff on Instagram, um, and it's like, to me, it's like it's been done for like ten steps, and it's like ten steps past done, and it's still like obviously a work in progress for him. And it's like, how, what else could you do? And mm -hmm. then three days later, he'll post it again, and it's finished. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> what if, what he how you just kept going? <laughs> it's great. He's just very talented. Don't worry when when you when you're not as good as Ben, it's a lot easier to just stop because you, you get to a point where like, well, I'm ruining this. <laughs> so let's stop. <laughs> Generally, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fortunately, cars don't have faces, so you won't get to that part. Like for me, it's usually like, ah, yes, well, that's what time we're doing for the next face. Week. That's what we're doing next week. We're putting a face on one of these things somehow. Oh no. My nightmare. <laughs> I mean, I think that HUD is the closest we got to a face. Yeah. And you did like a perfect perfect concentric circle, so I think you're fine on faces. It's really not perfect. If you look at it, the inner dot is a little bit off. Oh darn. It is. And it's if it was uh, I honestly would redo it. Oh if no. This wasn't, I would. In, if this was not a live stream. Know, they're, they're... Both yeah, circles move, yeah, it's like the yeah, Death Star okay. thing, and that's that is actually the truth. Good job, Jimmy. Yep, that's what it was. That's how it was meant to be. It's yeah. tearing when, him up inside. <laughs> it is. Jimmy's like, this is a great excuse. And it's like, shredded. I want. I, he's getting an ulcer inside. from this, looking at that off center dot. Let's throw that one. Yes, stop by, stop by the Gen Con booth. I'll throw a car at you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't That's... promise that. Someone's going to ask for yeah. it. Uh, is, oh, there we go. Let's, All right. And this is called the stiletto, right? Yeah. No, I did. I, I, part of the reason why I did this one was red is because the studio paint job, is what we'll call it, is completely different. Like, for some reason, I looked at it and I saw, this is one of the, I mean, I say this with all the love. Uh, this is one of the kind of the goofier cars in the set. So I, 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 I looked at it and it looked like, like a superhero slash super villains crazy getaway car. And so what I ended up going with for that one was uh, like a weird, like almost like frost thing where it's like a white with a, a jagged blue uh, rear. So like the front is white or maybe, maybe it's backwards from that. Um, so yeah, so for this one, it's bright red. And I don't know, I'll have to, well, I'll have to figure out something weird to freehand on the front of it. I don't know what that's going to be. Um, but yeah, so that's it for now. Really just a bunch of uh, wet blending, those reds. Um, I might do a wash on them to get them a little bit more vibrant. And then if it were dry, which is not quite yet, I would do what I've done with um, Pure Energy. And I would do a black wash over all those very pale blue areas on the weapons um, to get down quickly into the recesses so that I can you know, see what else going on there and help pick out the details and highlights a little bit easier using that wash kind of as a guide. Yeah, that, that one was in set three. Oh, yeah, yeah, Just It's like kind of glacier-y looking. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. I thought of it as like Frozone. Yes. Oh, th sorry, I can't use um, uh, copyrighted names. But yeah, the... Uh, Mr. Ice. The, yeah, Mr. Ice. <laughs> you could be inspired by... <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I get you. I I have a question. It's a, not a chat question. It's just for me. Do you, do you, is it is it higher pressure knowing that you're like canonizing different art form? Like you're essentially like people are going to base what they paint on. I'm, I know someone's going to watch this this video and like 
base how they paint their car off of how you painted the car. Is that is that cool or is that stressful? Your face reads very stressed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I guess I haven't thought about it with this. Um, or even your previous art, like your box art. People are going to look at that box art and be like, this is how I want to paint my car. Yeah, I mean, that, that that's what I was going to say was this is um, if these were the first guys that I'd ever done, I probably would be that way because there was that way with um, some of the stuff I did before uh, we started with our own miniatures line, so like Arena Rex and then... Um, uh, even after that there was ogre where um, oh yeah ogre miniatures yeah i mean actually steve had me for anybody who owns the ogre miniatures book um i just sort of did a yellow scheme and steve was like okay that looks cool so then it would end up being yellow for this whole huge army and then steve at one point had me he was like well it, it, it it's it's part of the game now so it has to have a background so i actually came up with a background for it which um I actually looked at national flags that had red and yellow because those were the two predominant ones and I came up with a Catalan, which is like that area in the northeast of Spain, which kind of works because they, uh, I think, did a little Catalan research and they have like a pretty heavily industrialized um, mm. economy. So it kind of made sense. They might be cranking out ogres and, and crazy tanks in like 150 years or whenever the ogre time In the year 2000? Yeah, in the year 2000. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that, that, that actually is like full on happened and it's in, the, it's in the ogre miniatures book. Cool. Well, that's cool. I mean, <clears throat> and now we get to make a background about your cars. Yep. Well, awesome, guys. Uh, anything, any other questions before we sign yeah. off there, Jimmy? Brandon, nothing? All right. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed it. Um, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for all the questions. I had fun as usual. Um, maybe I'll see some of you at Gen Con. And yep. if not, I will be on here streaming in about a month or so, right? Yep. About yep. a month or so. Catch Ben and Jimmy at Gen Con. You can catch us playing some more Car Wars I won't next really, week. I won't throw a car at you. He, he will not throw a car at you. We only have a few of the cars we cannot or, throw. Uh, not, not at you, not at anybody that you ask. Like, no, I'm not going to throw a car at your buddy, even if it's their birthday. That's not, I'm not going to become the car throwing guy. That's not going to be what I'm known for. It's just not happening. I don't know about that. Hey, get your, <laughs> we got a clip. You're the car throwing guy. Well, and we got the pre orders up now. If you're interested in checking out Car Wars, if you've missed out on the Kickstarter, if you want to get more stuff for other people, maybe as a gift, if you want to get more stuff for yourself as a gift, you deserve it. I believe in you. Uh, and if you want to check out the Uncle Al's Terrain Pack, Arena Pack, what, I'm going to mess that name up a jillion times, that is also available to be a pre order. But thank you guys for checking us out. I hope you have a great weekend. We'll see you next week on SJ Games Live. Yep. Have an awesome weekend. Thank you.